Okay, I think that uh, I think that this is turned on and everything's set up and working. So um, I guess I'll do what other people that I watch do and just say, if you can see me, say hi. Some of them say goofy things like if you can see and hear me and everything is good, say some funny word like llama or something. I don't have a word, but um, you can just say if you are hearing and seeing everything good. Uh, I'm, I'm folding paper towels at the moment. Let's see here. Um, get my camera set right and check check one or two settings uh, hmm there hopefully that's right uh, that's not gonna be good there I have to stand on my tiptoes I'm not sure what I did just now oh uh, that should fix it. I somehow got some things changed on my uh, setup. But anyway, uh, you can hear and see me from California. All right. Hooray. And Jackie, you can see me and it looks good and sounds good. So that's great. Um, what... What I'm hoping happens is we don't have any um, herky-jerky glitching and starting and stopping and crazy nonsense that will make this uh, a problem that causes me to have to quit early. I tweaked a few things um, on my setup last night. I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and and got my eyes crossed and my head exploding learning about bit rates and latency and and uh, stream keys and variable rate stream keys and a whole bunch of crazy stuff that I think I changed a few things that will help so we don't have problems and uh, and I don't get that whole message that says um, what was it saying poor stream health or something like that, meaning I'm freezing up and stuff. Um, and I changed something to do with uh, stream latency, which apparently having that on low latency helps things work better instead of having it on high. I don't know. It's all backwards. doesn't mean anything um, that makes sense to me. But the point is, hopefully, this will go smoothly today. If it gets chaotic, well... Uh, it's my first real official live stream, and we're going to work through it, uh, and it's exciting. <laughs> so anyway, um, hi to everyone who's here, and I think what we should do is just go ahead and get started. Um, if you have a question, put it in the chat. If you, uh, What I've seen on other channels is if you uh, put it, your question in all caps, that helps um, me and my moderator, who is Jackie, see the questions more easy. It makes them stand out in that chat, which apparently um, is a really big deal once I get super famous and have a thousand people <laughs> watching my live stream. <sighs> but anyway, um, so uh, I'm glad you're here. And, um, oh, I was also going to tell you that when Jackie and I did a test of this yesterday, we discovered there's like a major lag, almost 60 seconds, between what I'm actually standing here saying and when you see it and hear it. And then when your question comes back in the chat, it's another 60 seconds, so it may be like two minutes later. So we're going to do our best to work with that, and uh, I'm also going to keep studying after today. I'm going to watch this really good, the replay of this, and see if there's any more tweaks I can do to make it better for future. But for today, um, we're going to forge ahead, and hopefully um, it's going to be great. So with that being said, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead, and um, I'm going to switch the 
screen down to my uh, desktop and now here's where this lag issue comes in I'm flying a little bit blind here because I have to wait to see it on my preview camera when it comes across to you so um, I'm going to assume that my tabletop is here and you're seeing what's on it which at the moment is a whole lot of nothing so here is this and this these are my pictures oh i forgot to turn on my lights to get things um hopefully that i better get my uh get my mouse and switch back over to i can switch back over to a different screen and see if i've got things like right there i didn't have it in the um in the frame so I can fix that by switching to my other screen, but then I can't really see what's going on with the live stream. So um, maybe for today, I'm just gonna keep my mouse um, close by so that, uh, so that I can switch back and forth between the two uh, screens in case I need to double check and make sure I've got what I think I have in the frame. But what I got here is this is a Picasso triggerfish, which um, I had never heard of before. Wow, I'm looking at my face up there in the in the my little box up up there on the side, and it's much more of a close up than it used to be. <laughs> I did change a few things around trying to make them better. Hopefully, it's still better. Um, but anyway. Uh, what I've got here is the Picasso trigger fish and I've got a couple different versions actually um, I have a whole bunch of them up in the top part of my uh, desk up there because I've uh, experimented with them because I was wanting to come up with really great ways to make the uh, the backgrounds and to make this color in the fish here really pop and I've just experimented and played around with a lot of different um, ways to get good color in there. I even took my my reference photo and uh, played around with them in a program that I have. It's very similar to Photoshop, but that's not what it is. It's a different one. But anyhow, played around with it in there and came up with these colorful um, renditions of, of my mm, reference photo which I got on unsplash.com, by the way. Um, so they're, they're uh, royalty free and um, artists have permission to use these photos in their, in their artwork. So um, if you're not already familiar with Unsplash, check it out, there's some cool stuff there. Anyway, I made some, some goof offs. These kind of look like um, uh, cartoons. And I mostly was just throwing color in there just to see what would happen. And, um, and that was based off of these. And they're fun, but, you know, they don't have the pop and the pizzazz that things do when you get your really good um, dark colors in there. So um, playing around with that some more. Uh, here's another one that I did that I've just got... Um, I've got some nice dark in here. I didn't really work on the background. I just threw color on there because I just wanted to uh, have something there so it didn't look like just a fish in the middle of nothing. But anyhow, um, doing all this, uh, I, I did these play arounds to see um, how I want this painting to end up because I'm gonna probably end up doing a really big nice one on like a 16 by 20 or something and maybe even put it in an exhibit somewhere or something but for my playing around working things out and figuring I usually do these um, or well, I've started uh, in the last couple of months doing these smaller ones because I can do a whole painting on here it's just smaller uh, but it allows me to work out uh, composition and color and all kind of cool stuff that we want to know before we do a whole big painting and also uh, for me anyway uh, the bigger paper just it's more of a of a 
commitment of my dollars and I don't like to practice a whole lot on a really large piece of paper and use up uh, that paper when I know I'm gonna want to rework things a lot so these small ones work good for that and um, I decided I wanted to go really really super dark on the background because because this looks cool I think it does I mean you can let me know what you think in the in the chat if you if you like it I mean it is it's blue ocean water and it's pretty let's put it over here and see um, I don't know if I can try to zoom in or not let me just see if I can do that in a way that that lets me uh, not show you the wrong thing here this is going to work for a minute anyway this has a lot of pretty blue color in it and I like it but I really like how all the dark color just gives this such a strong um, to me this is a much stronger better painting uh, and even without really working hard to get exactly the background I want on there just getting the right color on there it's really cool so I'm gonna go with that instead of this and um, to get, uh, I thought, you know, it was a perfect thing to share with you about how to get uh, those really dark colors because I didn't want to put black in there. Black will muddy your, um, your painting. Your, your colors don't look good. They just, it, it like dirties them up. <laughs> I don't know if that's an okay way to say it, but... Uh, but I think it is. It it um, it just isn't as pretty to put black in your paint color and change your color to um, to such a dark color. So uh, I I want to show you how to get these really good dark colors without using black. And it is so easy, and and it's easy to know how to do it, no matter what colors you're painting with. Um, so. So that's what we're going to do. Now, um, I am looking at my screen and seeing that I've uh, somehow rather changed some settings up and you can't see my paint palette. So I got to check what I did with that and undo whatever I did that make it you can't see the paint palette. So give me a second till I figure out where I put that. Um, and it's not right there, is it? And I didn't move my cameras. I was thinking of moving the cameras, but I didn't do it because I didn't want exactly this situation to pop up. So let me think what in the world did I do and what can I undo to make it back like it's supposed to be. So this is going to take a minute. Sorry. But it's a good time for you to ask me stuff if you... Um, want to. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to skip having that like that because I don't honestly know what happened to all of these things. I didn't change them this much. And yet here they are, totally different than they just were yesterday. <laughs> so that is going to work, I think. So I could take the lid off that, and there you can see, um, let's put this up here. You can now see my paint palette pretty well, um, and like usual, <laughs> it's not cleaned out, but we'll deal with that. Um, so, first a piece of paper, and I'm just going to draw these fish. I'm going to probably paint a couple of them, and I'm going to... Uh, draw them really fast for you so we don't take a lot of time because this isn't really meant to be a drawing lesson today. Um, so
So uh, here's what you need to, you need to have something like this drawn on your paper. No shading, and you really don't need even this much lines. Um, but I'm going to put that right there just so I can look at it, and I'm going to just draw. Um, this thing has, he has some funny lips on him, and uh, like a long slanty forehead. So I'm just going to get him thrown on here pretty fast. I like the way um, the mouth goes on the front end of it, though. And put that right around there. Put that going back there. And down. And then put the tail on him. His tail just goes up like that, something along those lines. And then we've got we've got a fin that on this thing it looks like it comes out from where it doesn't come out from. So I just make up something that looks good. Put this coming up from here. And that's about all I need for, for the drawing. Uh, I will go ahead and put this eye in here. And just to remind myself, I'm going to put a few little details in with the pencil, but mostly I prefer to put it in with with the paint as much as I can. Um, so let's do this, and then he's got these white um, like stripes on him that you want to not get paint in. So it is probably a good idea if you're painting along with this. Go ahead and draw something in there for. Um, to remind you not to paint, not to get those areas wet. They're going to need to stay dry so the paint doesn't run into them. So if you mark them off, it'll help you in that. And then we've got a little bit of a white area right here that we don't want to get paint in. And that's, that's pretty close. I guess I'll put some of this little definition around the eye just so you can for sure see where I'm going with it. Um, put that down along there. Something like that. Then the rest of what I put in there I'll put in with the paint. Um, so, uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is is the fact that I'm only going to use about three colors. Now I have a really good puddle of this color that I'm going to use right here, but so that I can show you what's going on with it, I'm just going to erase it. It's not actually a puddle of color, it's, um, it's dried paint from when I was painting the other day. So I'm just wipe that right out of there, and um, I'm going to use three colors for this. Mostly I may throw in a little bit more at the end just for tweaking the the end result but for the most part I'm gonna paint this whole thing using phthalo blue and uh, probably transparent red oxide I might use burnt sienna I use those two interchangeably you know um, they're they're very similar so there's a spot for my blue mixes to go and my dark mixes are going to go right in there. I'm going to leave a little of that and clean out a little spot for this quinacridone gold so I can show you that's what I've got there and I guess I'll move that red out of there. I leave these things in my paint palette because they are still viable paint even though it's dried and it isn't doesn't look like it's very much. Um, I paint a lot of small things and I paint with a lot of detail so sometimes there's just enough of something there to go ahead and pick it up and, and reuse it. Uh, so I do that. Let me uh, grab a little bit of paint here um, because my burnt sienna is running out. I can't get it open.
but there's the transparent red oxide and yeah got it okay so I'll use that today that's transparent red oxide um, it's I, I like this color I think maybe it might be just a little bit cleaner than uh, burnt sienna but burnt sienna is a great color uh, that you can use all the time for and they make great darks uh, I think I'll just keep that laying right here in case I do decide to get the pliers and get that open uh, so I can show you but let's first of all let me show you here I've got this phthalo blue and that's a really pretty blue I used that a lot in my um, in, in all my experiments and I sometimes use that just for water just by itself it's it's pretty it's a it's a nice color so um, so there's that and the more pigment I put in there without adding more water it does get darker but you see how it just still stays really potently blue well if you want to get uh, um, something that's more tending toward dark or gray uh, you can neutralize this a little bit with this uh, burnt sienna or transparent red oxide now I don't know if you know a lot about colors on the color wheel let's see where I put mine it's right here uh, of course I can't get my hand on it right when I thought I had it right where I needed it it is so across across from these blues on this color wheel you can see our oranges and reds and um, over in here where it's more towards the phthalo blue um, you can go straight across there and you see this is a a, a brighter orange version of what we might think of when we're when we're thinking of uh, burnt sienna or something but you know the fact that the colors are kind of across from each other on the color wheel is what clues you in to the fact that you can mix those colors together and get neutrals and in the right um, formats and, and amounts you can get really good darks and even black so here's some of the transparent red oxide and that um, you can just see the color there it's just a nice pretty browny orangey brown color and if I mix that with some of this phthalo blue it starts uh, graying it down and getting nice and dark and the more I get some of that color and put it in there look at how it's going uh, really towards a real nice black now let me add some water in there and spread that out so you can see it's almost a greeny gray um, black color um, so it would be uh, a warm gray or a warm dark and sometimes that matters too in what you're painting because uh, the mood of the thing can be controlled by um, by the temperature of whatever you put in there but anyway that is a really nice dark just from those colors there and and it's just two colors mixed to make that and the more pigment you put in the darker it gets I'm trying to scrape my brush in the palette there so you can uh, see really good how dark that is it's not super thick um, it's it's probably about the consistency of really melty butter um, that that's that's a good uh, way to think of it as far as uh, as how thick it is but anyway that is a uh, a good way to get a nice dark color that is made with the same colors that you're painting your painting with and that is really really key that's what I wanted to um, talk about today mostly is that if you will make your darks with the same colors you're painting the rest of your painting with they just flow together and they don't have that ugly appearance that they're just sticking out from your painting and don't belong because I, I don't know if you've ever had the experience I know back when I first started painting um, and I didn't I hadn't really um, 
come across anyone that was telling me about how you don't want to use black straight out of the tube. I thought, well, you know, they sell a tube of black, that's what I'm supposed to use. <laughs> but um, I got with the teacher from the Parks and, and Recreation Department of the um, city that I lived in at the time, and this is like, I don't know, 30 years ago, maybe even more. <laughs> but. Um, but that guy told me at that time, never use black. And I thought, oh, okay. So I started studying it then and found out I really appreciated being told that early on because I did learn about how you can get so much prettier results on your paper if you don't put that muddy black color into your paint and make it ugly. Um, so um, along the way, you know, skipping all those 30 years <laughs> and moving up to now, um, I have learned how to uh, use the colors, not just, don't just memorize a recipe, because this is a thing I have to, I've seen other people's videos where they take and, and uh, memorize a list of recipes for black or dark gray, and those are what they use like it's another color out of a tube so whatever they're painting they just think of whatever their current favorite recipe for black is and they use that without considering whether or not they're using those colors in that recipe in that mix anywhere else in their painting and you still in my opinion have um you have that problem with it, it, it just doesn't really look like it flows with your painting, with your piece. So that is why um, I wanted to tell you today, use, um, use the colors. Let me just go ahead and put some paint on this one that I got going here. Uh, actually, I don't want to do the background first. I'm going to do the fish. Use some color. And that means that brush is going to be too small. Let's put color right here on the fish and don't get it on those white areas. And this area right in here needs to stay white too. Like my fingernails are almost white. <laughs> I ran out of time to paint my nails again. Actually, I could have painted over the, the existing crappy polish and done a, a hurry up no good job and I decided I didn't want to do that. If I couldn't do my nails right I was going to leave them and do them later. So sorry, my fingernails are a little bit in need of attention. Anyways, I'm just putting water all over here. Uh, I'm not going to put water in there because right now I want that to stay nice and clean, this area right in here, where it's going to be like this on the fish. If I too quickly uh, let this color run over in there, um, that will get darker than I want it. And I want that to be nice and bright. So um, most everywhere else on the fish that there's going to be color, I'm just putting water. And I would say clean water, but if my camera is showing you really good, you'll see that I've been painting a little bit already and my water's already got some blue-greenish tinge going in it. Not great, but we'll live with it. All right, so there is water all over everywhere. Now I'm going to just take, um, let's see, I was going to use the quinacridone. All right, I got, I'm going to use this lemon yellow because it's on my brush. Um, so I'm going to just put a little bit right up in there. I don't want very much though, so and that's kind of a lot, kind of a little bit more than what I wanted. But I'm just putting a little bit of color in here in a few places, and I'll go with let me put a little puddle of this quinacridone out there so we got it available to pull from. Okay, now I'm going to put a stripe of this coming down from here and I put it right in that wet area so it melts into the into it there. I'm going to put a little bit right in here, pull that right up, a little bit on the bottom of there. And then we've got a line that goes from like that, if that's his upper lip or mustache, maybe that's a mustache, I don't know. Um, 
do I have the I don't have the one I painted already in the frame too good hopefully let me just grab my mouse and make sure I've got it in the frame sorry about this I am learning how to do this more and more as I work okay you can see both of those all right switching back over here um, the more times I do this whole live stream thing I think I'm gonna get a little better at it fingers are crossed uh, but anyhow so I'm gonna put this little part in here and it just starts back over here somewhere and goes up towards that mouth and that's good enough and because I think it would look pretty I'm gonna put a little bit of my red oxide in here with it and turn it a little bit browner and I'm gonna do the same thing right up here that will just add some more color and make that pretty right there so that's pretty good gets darker as it comes down towards this area because I'm gonna put a lot of really dark right in there like I did on this one here and let me just dot in a little bit of that color there okay so I got that looking good now um, I think I'm gonna start with a little bit of the phthalo blue and put a little bit right in here I need to get it wetter than that so it'll still run all around and blend in with that yellow that I put on there and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it right on these fins because I want a nice soft color on there that looks pretty good for that I think while I'm at it I'll put a little bit to get going on the uh, tail fin That looks pretty good for for the moment. Let me put a little bit right here. And a little bit darker at the top of that. Just because I want to do it while the paper's still good and wet. So it'll soften in there real good. Now um, I'm going to put some of this real watery stuff on this part above his eye. But I don't want it to go in the yellow of the eye. And then I think... Uh, I'll go ahead and put some starting to blend in right in there and a little bit between these stripes but I'm going to go back in and mix or take some of the mix that I made uh, over here this really dark stuff and I'm going to put some of that in there and that's going to spread around and look really pretty and just begin to really put some good color in here and really grab our attention uh, because it's such a dark pretty color it dried up a little so I'm going to uh, re-wet it with a little bit more water there and really get some dark pigment going on here and um, I want to make it dark down between that line and dark right in there and this is just mixing um, those the colors I've already got in on here I've got basically I've got three colors I did use a little bit of that uh, lemon yellow uh, but I could have done that with the the quinacridone gold I just forgot stuck my brush in the wrong thing but anyhow putting this color in here and just touching the brush in there because it, it's wet it really starts to run around there and blend and mix and you see as it gets um, out in the in the edges it can start separating a little bit and that's one of the reasons I like to use my own mix because it will sometimes depending on the paint that you use some paints will granulate um, you know they, they sort of start to separate and you start to see little bits of yeah you've got that big dark section there but it'll separate out a little and you've got uh, parts where you can see more of the blue and more of the transparent red oxide or you know whatever colors are in your mix you get little glimpses of those colors and it doesn't just look flat and boring like black out of the tube will look so that is to me one of the greatest reasons to go ahead and use um, 
your own mix. Now I'm going to get most of the paint off this brush and try to just kind of slide a little color over here because I want it to be a little bit broken up. It's not doing what I wanted it to do too good. I want to give a little bit of indication of um, fish scales. So I'm just lightly tapping uh, that on there. And then I've got a section right down here where I want really dark color. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's in my reference photo on the uh, fish right here. We've got some nice dark color right under there. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that there. And while I've got it on the brush, I've got these, um, let's see, where did my reference photos go? There's, there's these um, cool little dark scales in this section of his white tail there. So what I'm doing, I'm painting the dark around here and s letting the color kind of slide out into the lighter colors around those white stripes. And But I'm emphasizing it because I like it and so I'm going to make it a little bit more prominent. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush here and kind of put in something that I think gives me this look that that has on in the photo of of those little fish scales in the back and um, I think I think this is close to enough dark actually on the fish except I gotta put some in his eye this tip of this brush is a little bit big for this task but I think I can do it So there is enough of that eye in there. So I'm going to rinse most of that out of my brush. And I'm going to pick up, let's see, I'm going to just take some water for a minute and just loosen that edge right there just a little bit and let that start to run a little bit more down in there. And I think also I want to darken, let's see, I'm going to pull this down in a little bit more. Oops. Should have wiped the brush clean before I did that. And I'm just going to put a bit more of this gold and the burnt sienna right in there because I just want that to show up a little more. And then I'm going to take the damp brush and just kind of wiggle that together a little bit better to soften the transition between colors right there. And because my brush was damp but not super wet, I was able to, and, and the paint wasn't the whole way dry either, I was able to just jiggle those together a little bit. I jiggled some right over into that little white line though, so let me clean that out. That looks better. Okay, um, now let's see here. I'm going to emphasize, oh I got to get his his, he needs lips. So let me get some, I'm going to go ahead and get a little of this lemon yellow because I want the lips to be a brighter yellow right up here. So that's on there and just pull a little bit, rinse most of that out of there and with the brush damp just pull a little bit back into that a little more. Now I do need some of that yellow color right in here. I don't want to touch it to the dark color that's right there because it's still wet enough that it, they'll bleed together and I want to for the moment keep those separate so I'm gonna just barely get over in there a little bit and then I am gonna need some nice yellow color on that eye so I'll go ahead and get something put in there and I don't mind if the eye bleeds a little bit together there that's that's not gonna bother me so I'll do that that looks good and then I want to do some more with the blue on the head and then I have to put that in there so uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the, the color that has a little bit of the red oxide in it so it's a tiny tiny bit greener and I'm going to just put a little bit of that right here see if I've got that light enough I do okay that's on there and uh, I'm going to darken up a little bit right in here and kind of make those fins start to appear and there a little bit more. 
and I'm going to put a little bit more dark color on the back end of the tail and I'm just picking up the color that has the transparent red oxide in it mixing it with a lot more of the thalo blue and I get a really good color that's nice and dark but it still has blue in it now I don't quite like how that's too stark right there so I'm going to just soften it a little with just water on the brush So that's pretty good. Oops, time for a new paper towel. So this fish is actually looking pretty good. I, I don't want to overdo it. Um, I'm, I am going to have to put a little bit more definition around there, but mostly it kind of needs to be more dry. I guess I could try it a little bit now. Um, I think. I think I want to add a little bit more of a lavender appearance to it just for a little bit of like accent color maybe and I don't want it to be real strong mm. that's I don't know if I like it for me painting is is a lot of playing I'm um, I don't go into it with a, a set like I have to paint this in these colors I have a I have a plan but my plan is um, there's nothing rigid about it um, even well, I'm self-taught and I'm a little bit of a rebel, so uh, I, I don't think there's any problem with just changing my mind totally right in the middle of my painting. Sometimes it happens. Um, so I don't make up my colors the whole way before I get started. I just kind of see what I feel like painting with at the time, and some people don't like that, but, but I do, and this is my painting, so... Alright, so I'm going to just use this color I made up and just kind of touch in a little bit of the, um, the, the lines that go around his face. Let's show you the reference again. Uh, I should have probably printed out the one before I uh, doctored it all up with, with the, on the computer. But anyway, this works. You can see the, these really cool lines on his face down here. Um, I'm going to put those in and just put them kind of like this, touching that color in there. But I didn't want to get it done while that was still wet because I wanted that color not to run over in here because I think it looks prettier. Um, some of my samples, I, I uh, didn't really pay attention to that and I had the color running in and that's why I said it's kind of good to do those practices beforehand because you figure some stuff out while you're painting it and you go oh wow I didn't want that to happen or oh wow that was really cool I'm going to do that again next time so um, that's a cool reason why I do a lot of these practices and they if they come out good I can still put this in a frame it's small but it's pretty and I can still put that in a frame if I wanted to um, or, or it might make if it was just a tad smaller, I could uh, make it an oversized postcard and just mail it to somebody. So there's cool things you can still do with all these practices. Um, so I think it's good to do this. Anyhow, I'm going to put a little bit of that color on there just to darken that just a smidgen. And he needs a little bit of a shadow right in there. So that's happening. I think I might have overdid it. Let's take it out and do it again. Eh, that's probably good. Okay, now um, a little bit more of this lavender color somewhere else on this fish is going to be a good idea 
just for making it you know all look like it goes together so I'm going to just drop in a little bit of this in a couple other places and I didn't get the the finny parts on here so let me put some of those in that looks pretty good put some darker ones there okay I think I like that drop in a little bit right there just because I can and put something like that that looks cool oh, I like that okay now a little bit of color there a lot of it is is really done except for the background because once I put the background on here it's gonna uh, take over and and pull the rest of the the fish will just pop forward when you put that dark background on and that's one reason another reason I wanted to make my background really really dark and why this one was just not doing it for me even though it is blue and pretty and looks like water this one really to me this one looks good um, I saw let's see somewhere back there someone I don't see it on the chat oh there it is Suzanne said that uh, she thinks the darker one really pops yes it does and so that's why I wanted to show you how to mix these really good darks so um, I need to let it dry just a minute uh, well you know what it's probably good enough I think it is if I if I painted it too soon uh, the background would run into the fish and I don't want that to happen so uh, but I, I think that I think I'm good enough now here's another thing when you're doing backgrounds um, it's it's a good idea to um, to find a starting point so that when you're painting your background you can keep uh, what I think of as a wet leading edge um, I used to paint furniture and refinish furniture with these uh, stained and varnish products all in one and the directions on the can always said keep a wet leading edge well, what that meant was as I'm painting my piece of furniture um, I got it like if I if this is a tabletop I got to start at this side don't start in the middle and work out you got to start at one edge so that you're, you're, you're painting right along this edge where it's still wet and if you see something over there that you missed you don't want to go back over there and and uh, try to fix that while while it's tacky because it won't um, it, it'll make a big mess with that varnish and it's very similar um, with watercolor if you're painting along on your background and you see something that you um, that you missed you don't want to go back into it while it's still partially wet because you, you try to paint it and it, it makes it, it doesn't look right you're almost like picking up the paint more than laying it down um, I'm thinking I'm thinking of like when I'm frosting putting frosting on a cake and it has kind of sat there for a, a minute and it's kind of started to skin over and then you see a spot you want to uh, smooth out a little better we, you can't do it because it started to skin over and and if you've ever tried it before and you put that knife back on there um, in that part of the frosting and it just gets really yucky you, you know so you don't do that same thing with painting your watercolor in a large background um, one of the things I um, I see a lot of people talking about all the time with starting watercolor is learning how to do a flat wash well I don't like flat washes and the truth of the matter on that is I'm not very good at painting them I've tried and I, I'm just not very good at it so um, let's see I gotta check one thing here I'm just not that good at it so I don't do a lot of it but I can um, paint a, a nice background if I just follow that whole advice that I did with the uh, with the furniture and do the leading edge so I'm I get a lot of water on here uh, first of all I find well oops I'm jumping ahead here I find a spot to start where uh, um, uh, like I'm not going to start right here where I have an edge over here and an edge over here I'm going to start over here where I can paint right up against this and then work that way and keep working on the part where I've got it wet until I get all the way around that's how I do it on a really large piece where I can't just paint the whole background really fast all at once 
um, because sometimes if your piece is too large you just can't do that you won't get it all done on there uh, and, and it won't look good but start finding a good starting spot is a good thing to do before I get to that though I want to just put a little bit of uh, some sort of seaweedy something on the back of here because um, he's he's swimming in water where there's I don't know what it is but something growing in here it's not um, I'm not gonna make it coral but you could put coral in the back of yours if you wanted that would be pretty too so I'm just gonna put some seaweedy looking stuff around him then um, I probably thinking here I'll paint the seaweed last because that way um, I can do the I can do the background and then when I put the seaweed in on the top if I need to um, to adjust anything about the shape of the seaweed or the shape of whatever I put in the background it's easier to do when I'm painting the seaweed than it is when I'm painting the background if that makes any sense to you at all hopefully it does So, um, put another piece right here. Okay, seaweed. I'm going to paint the background and then I'm going to paint the seaweed um, because because I can adjust how I paint the seaweed and then erase those pencil lines if I need to. Um, so I'm not going to be stressed to get my background just exactly perfect. Um, I'm already going to be doing that to paint around the fish. So I don't want to do it around the seaweed as well. So now I'm going to just put some water on. I keep getting the water on the table. I'm going to just put some water on this area where I'm going to start painting. And then I'm going to take some more of the colors that I have in the painting. The uh, thalo blue and the um, transparent red oxide, which again, that could be burnt sienna if that's what you have and prefer. Anyway, so I've got a lot of water on there. And I'm just going to go right into this um, thalo blue. And I have a whole bunch of that in my paintbrush now. I don't know if you can see it. Look at all that paint that's in that brush. Um, and I'm going to just put it right there into the puddle where I've already got some dark going on there. And But I want this to be really, really dark. So I'm going to just put it right in there. And it could be darker. So I'm going to pick up some of that transparent red oxide and lay that in there. And right away it's making that get dark. And I didn't even mix it on the palette. I just put it right into the paper there. And I can shape that tail fin a little bit too while I'm doing this. If I want to. It's running off my paper because I didn't tape it on a board. Um, but anyway, here there I'm going to just put that color right around that fish and just keep picking up more so I can keep it really nice and dark and um, I, I like it to be blue but I want it to be good and dark so I get the blue on the brush and start putting it in there but when it starts getting not enough dark then I just start adding more of the um, transparent red oxide right onto the paper and you see where I've got the paper wet, it's just grabbing that paint and letting it spread out. So I'm not going to get hard edges and, and uh, things in the background that I don't want. And by just painting right in here where I've got it really nice and wet, I can keep my background looking good and smooth enough. It'll dry really nice with just a little bit of nuances of, um, of shading going on in there without me having to worry that I'm not getting a really nice pretty flat wash. I'm not going to stress about that because painting is supposed to be fun, 
not stressful. So there I've got a really cool background going. Also got a mess on my table going. And also if there's any little spots that show up that look um, lighter, uh, who's to say that's not some seaweed farther away? Uh, so no stressing over uh, over my background here. I'm just working on getting the color good and everything else will will work out just fine as long as I get this color great. And I'm making sure I'm getting some nice uh, dark color while I'm right up close to the back end of the fish here because that's where it would be darkest and that's where I'm gonna have it really um, pushing him forward making him pop out of the water and the seaweed right up here where we can see him good and these little sections I didn't bother to get them wet because they're too small the little bits in between the the seaweed here don't need to really sweat that at all either and I'm using the tip end of the brush just to kind of emphasize the the jaggedy edge on the fins and let's see I'll put a little of this right in here there might be some rocks back in there too we don't know so if your color gets really really dark and goes more towards a, a gray that's okay because maybe there's rocks back there how are we to know Okay, most of the rest of that's going to be painted green because it's the plant material. Okay, now I want to show you when I get to this part on the fish, there's that really dark part on the bottom of the body of the fish, and I want to make a, a thing that's called a lost edge right there, which means you're not really going to see where the the background starts and where that body of that fish starts they're the same color and they're going to bump right up against each other there now I'm going to go ahead and add a bit more blue as I get over to this way and I'm also not going to worry too much about that little white dot in there because I don't know if it's a bubble or if it's another tiny little fish back behind him or something like that. So I'm going to leave that alone. Then I'm not going to bother to get all of the paint out of my brush because I'm going to put this same color on here but I want to get a lot of water on here so I'm just going to pretend like this is my clear water and just start getting this wet but I'm going to go back in and add more pigment to it in a minute. I just want to get the water all over here and it it hurts absolutely nothing for there to be a lot of pigment in that water until I get over to this edge and then I don't want that to have that much um, paint there where I'm not ready to paint quite yet so I get a lot more water in the brush there and just spread that out so I don't end up with that hard edge or a distinct line in the dark color of my background. So I'm just running that over to there a little bit and and that's good enough. If that, it, say I got interrupted and that dried before I had a chance to get back here and finish painting the dark color on it. Nothing here is so uh, so um, distinct or, or you know, I don't have a distinct line and I could paint right over the top of it like if I was doing layers and get um, and get the color painted on there in a way that it doesn't hurt anything if I go back in and paint on it when it's dry or getting dry. I've got this a little bit too dark compared to that so in a minute I'll probably, when that's good and dry, I'll layer some more um, phthalo blue over top of it 
just so I don't have something that looks wrong right there. And I want to get this carefully in around these little lips of this fish mouth here. And put plenty of the dark color in this corner. I'm wishing now I had taped him down to a board because I don't have much to hold on to. I'm going to just pull that right down around my little seaweed bits. And if I wanted, I could put a bit more blue and, a, and make it a little bit lighter in here just so there'd be some interest in the background. A little bit lighter section would probably go good here. But that just means I need to add more water, not change paint colors. So I just did that, added some more water. And I'm going to spread the paint that I already have on the paper right down into these sections where my seaweed is going to be. And I'm going to leave that corner considerably lighter just so I have that little bit of variety. And clean all this messy paint off my table. Okay. Now I don't have to wait for the background to dry because if my um, seaweed color blends into the uh, background of the water, that's not going to hurt anything at all. I started to get some green there, but I don't really need to. I'm going to take some of this color that's my, my puddle of, uh, of the dark background, and it's got a little bit more of the transparent red oxide in it, so it's, it's a nice green dark green color already, but I'm going to plop it over here and put some of this yellow, the quinacridone gold, right in there, and it goes even greener, and if I get a good amount of it, I end up, I think, with a really pretty green for my seaweed. Yeah, that's looking good. going a little darker than I would like it to be so I'm going to scoop that over and let's see here I'm going to just put some of this dark color and start touching it in isn't that pretty and it's it's just the pink colors we already have the um, quinacridone gold with just a little bit of the phthalo blue and the transparent red oxide and there we have some really pretty green for the seaweed. And it is a different color, but also is a color that flows really, really good with the whole rest of the painting. And by varying up the amount of blues and yellow in the mix, you can get a um, little variety going in your um, in your green color and just dropping that in there This guy is pretty much done. Except I'm 
going to do a little bit of something right there. Just lift a little bit of a highlight right there so you do see the bottom edge, just that little tiny bit there. So we don't forget that that is the bottom of that fish. Now I could take my brush and lift out a little bit uh, of like a cross hatching type of thing in here and kind of get some more indication of uh, fish scales going. That wouldn't hurt anything at all. Kind of have to think about the direction that I'm, I'm doing that though just so I don't overdo it or uh, get it in the wrong place. And sometimes it's a good idea to put a little bit of that into the fish fin. A little bit of highlighted parts in here. Anyhow, that's pretty good. I'm I think I might touch just a little bit of this lavender color right on there and add a little bit of blue over the top of it. And then when it dries, I'll probably, actually I could probably do it now, just take my small round brush and use some of this other brighter lemon yellow and touch up around the eye. Just to bring that out a little more. Put a little bit of this color right back in there. He's looking pretty good, I think. and I made all that nice dark color right in there just with mixing um, my phthalo blue and transparent red oxide and I've got some really nice darks oh I said I was going to layer a little more in there I think I will just layer a little bit on top of there to make that it's where it's not such an obvious change of color I've got it too loose now I want to feather that out in here and get it less and less wet so that it won't dry with a with a hard edge. Okay, so that is how to make uh, dark colors from the colors in your painting. So um, uh, let me get my color wheel up one more time and just show you. What I did was I took the colors opposite of each other on my color wheel. Um, I could put this piece of paper over here. You know, we talked about recipes. There are these people that make recipes. And they'll tell you, take um, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Or take, uh, you can take a really bright violet color and put some yellow or even your, um, your same red oxide or uh, or burnt sienna in there and once you get enough of the two colors in there you've got a really nice good uh, neutral uh, you can do that with let's see here I'm going to put some quinacridone gold here and then put the violet into that so you can see it just makes really nice neutrals when you mix these colors that are opposite to each other on the color wheel and you get really nice dark uh, dark color and uh, so keep in mind colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel when you're painting and you're picking your colors and you're, and you're making your painting and you're looking for how to get your 
you're dark, um, find a couple that are across from each other on the color wheel and experiment with them a little bit and mix them together and see how you can get some really, really nice uh, dark colors going on. Here's a, a red color, alizarin crimson. And I'm going to put some emerald or thalo green in it. And even without mixing that on my paint palette, I've got a really uh, dark color going there just from those two colors. And so if you were painting something that was red and green, let me put some water through these and just show you here. You've got a lot of purple in this one a lot of green in that one. So that's what direction they'll tend to and you can do your lost edges and dark blending right into the um, the color areas and, and it'll just flow together and be really pretty instead of I don't even have any black on my uh, my palette so I can't show you the difference but but I think you know what I mean. Um, you know, it, you don't want just a real stark, um, abrupt color change. And such something so, so abrupt and stark as black straight out of the tube, um, it just it just isn't as pretty. So here are these paintings that I painted today and yesterday. And if you have any questions. Um, I'll try my best to answer them. Otherwise, it is a little bit after three, so we've gone for an hour. Uh, that hour went fast. Wow. I see that uh, Suzanne likes the background. That's good. And I guess um, I did notice that if you don't have an account, you can't uh, actually uh, comment in the chat. Uh, all that's about is if you've got like a Gmail uh, for your email account, then you can sign in to uh, your YouTube with that account and then you can uh, click uh, on, on my videos you can you can put comments in the chat and ask questions so if you were wondering how to do that that's how and uh, thank you Susie for uh, coming and watching and listening to what I have to say about watercolor I hope you had fun <sighs> thanks Jackie for uh, being there to watch and let me know how everything's going and this was fun. I definitely will be doing this again. Um, I had to turn off every other device connected to the Wi-Fi in my house just to make sure I wouldn't have a problem with the, the stream or anything. But it worked. And I don't think we had any uh, kooky freezing up or strange stuff. So uh, I'll definitely be doing this again most likely every other Friday uh, throughout the summer around the same time of day so if that works for you great let me know and uh, this thing will get the recording of this session will get uploaded to my YouTube channel um, after we finish here today and you can find it again if you want to refer back to it or anything uh, or put any uh, information for me uh, questions suggestions whatever in the comments uh, and feel free to go to my website too and you can message me directly from my website and uh, give me suggestions <laughs> uh, tell me what day works for you for uh, for watching the live streams or anything like that appreciate hearing from you so uh, thanks a lot and I guess uh, we'll go ahead and sign off now because uh, because wow, it is over an hour. Um, I'm surprised, but pleased, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, thanks a lot, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>